Tonight's story is about a carrot which had arms and legs. And the carrot's name was Carruthers. Carruthers? Carruthers. It's That's rather an unusual name for a carrot. Also a funny name. It is, but that was the carrot's name. Well, Carruthers lived inside the fridge waiting to be eaten. Why? But Carruthers didn't really want to be eaten because he thought he really deserved to be back in the ground growing some nice leaves. One day, the fridge door opened and Carruthers, the carrot, shivered with fright. Oh my goodness, he thought. I hope I'm not going to be eaten today. The mother who lived in the house was going through the kitchen, the fridge, looking for something. Now she said, where did I put that ham? I think I'll make a nice salad this evening. We could have ham and cheese and lettuce and eggs and Carrot. onions and Carrot. carrots. <gasps> Poor Carruthers, he shivered with fright. And then she started looking for Carruthers, who was hiding right at the back of the fridge, hoping that she wouldn't find him. She scrabbled around and she picked out a piece of beetroot. Oh, beetroot, that'll go well with the salad, she said. And then she took the lettuce out and some, uh, some celery and a couple of eggs to boil. Hmm, I can't seem to find the carrots. Well, I'll put the pot, the pot of boiling water on it anyway, and when I find it, I can just pop the carrot into the boiling water and it'll be cooked in no time, she thought. But first I'll have to chop him into little pieces. Oh, poor Carruthers. He was terrified at the thought of being chopped into little pieces and then boiled alive. He was very frightened. He shivered even more right at the back of the fridge and tried to hide under the butter, hoping that she wouldn't find him. She continued to scrabble around in the fridge, looking for the carrot. At last, she found Carruthers the carrot, right at the back, hiding behind the butter dish. Ah, oh, there it is. I knew I had a carrot, she said. And she put him down on the chopping board and went to get her very large chopping knife. Well, Carruthers saw his chance and he jumped up and ran as fast as he could. And he jumped down from the um, the chopping table, the table in the kitchen, and ran under the kitchen table. But there was no way to get out into the garden because all the doors were shut. Then the lady came back and turned round to her, ch her chopping board, carrying a big machete. What's happened to that carrot, she said. I know I put it down there. And she looked left and right, but she couldn't see it. Just then, the carrot saw his chance and he ran upstairs, upstairs, but jumping up and down. One, two, three, four, up, 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 up. He went to the upstairs and he ran into the first bedroom he saw and shut the door and stood behind the door, shivering with fright, terrified that the lady from the house might find him and chop him in bits and then boil him alive. He was so frightened. Are you frightened? I love cab. I I love I love carrots with them. I I I'm 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 surprised which carrots are alive, and I and I and I and happy if they're like carrots because I work chop. I'm going to to cook them. Just then. As he was hiding behind the door in he the bedroom. He didn't get, he didn't get caught at never. He never get caught, Daddy. Well, I'm not going to tell you the end. You'll have to wait and see. Just then, as he was hiding behind the door in the bedroom, inside the bedroom, he noticed something. He heard a noise. And then a very tiny voice said, Who are you? You look like a carrot. Carruthers was 
terrified again. Oh no, another human being has found me. What's going to happen to me? He said, please, please don't eat me. And the little voice said, you can talk. I didn't know carrots can talk. Of course I can talk, said Carruthers. Now, please let me go. Don't, 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 don't eat me. Oh no, I'm not going to eat you, said the little boy. I don't like carrots. Do you want to be my friend, said the little boy. Uh, yeah, yes, yeah, sure, said Carruthers, a bit nervously. Okay, but you have to play with me, said the little boy. Uh, sure, sure. So Carruthers, the carrot, thought this might be a very good idea to play with the little boy <coughs> um, in, to avoid being eaten. But just then, he heard some footsteps coming up the stairs. Who do you think was coming upstairs? Lady? Yes. My mommy. Oh no, said Carruthers, I'm going to be eaten, she's going to find me. Don't worry, said the little boy, I'll hide you. And he grabbed the carrot and tucked him under his pillow and then jumped into bed and put his head on the pillow, closed his eyes and pretended to be asleep. The mother came in, looked at the dark room, saw her little boy lying on the bed, seemingly asleep with his eyes shut. She came over and gently kissed her son on the cheek, pulled up the blanket to cover him a bit better and went out. As soon as they heard her going down the stairs, the little boy lifted up the pillow and said, Are you all right under there? And the Carruthers, the carrot, said, Yes, I'm all right, but it was very hard to breathe under a pillow. <sighs> he said, panting. He could hardly breathe when he was under the pillow. Anyway, the little boy and the carrot then started to play together. And carrot, the, not the carrot, Carruthers decided he really liked this little boy. They started to build a train set and they made a nice figure of eight design for the train to go around in a crisscross fashion. And the little boy and the carrot played together no end. Then the little boy said to the carrot, would you like me to read you a book? Oh, yes, please, said Carruthers. So the little boy took one of his ladybird books. Of course, he couldn't read, but he pretended to read and told Carruthers the whole story of Little Red Riding Hood in his own words. He could tell, so he pretended to tell a story. Yeah, he pretended to tell the story. Of course, he could look at the pictures, but he couldn't read the actual words. And then the little boy heard a voice from his mother and the mother was calling him to come down for breakfast and saying it's time for school. So the little boy quickly jumped out of bed, put his underpant on, put his trousers on, put his top on, and then he put Carruthers in his pocket and didn't tell anybody it was a secret. When the mother saw him dressed, she said, My goodness me, you've dressed yourself. I didn't know you knew. I didn't know that you knew how to do it. Very good, she said. Well done, little boy. And so the little boy went down to breakfast and had some nice cereal for breakfast. And he could feel his friend, the carrot, wiggling in his pocket. The carrot felt very safe with the little boy who was looking after him. And then the mother took him to the school. In the school, they had lots of lessons like mathematics, history, geography, English, French, and what mechanics, huh? carpentry. carpentry. What's carpentry? It's when you work with wood. Mechanics is when you work with um, hinges and uh, wheels and cogs and machines and things. And history is learning about our past, what happened many years ago. And geography is learning about the places on the planet, like all the different countries and what grows there, what kind of people live there, what people do as jobs, um, what the climate is like. Is it hot or is it cold? Is it snowy? For example, the climate in the Antarctic is very cold. It's, it's uh, icy. Whereas the climate in the Sahara is very hot. It's like the Sahara is very, very warm and hot and arid. I mean, arid means there's no rain. So when you do geography, you learn about things like that, about the climate, about the places, about the areas, the people, 
the lands of the, of the world. And you, when you do science, you learn to do experiments with different chemicals, or maybe you dissect a frog. Well, that might be more biology when you dissect animals. And in biology, you'd learn about insects and worms and frogs and all kinds of animals. Everything there is to know about animals and the skin, and under the skin there's the flesh, and under the flesh there's the bones and the veins. Those are the things you learn in school. Astronomy is when you learn about the stars. What else do you learn in school? Mathematics, that's when you do sums. Play. Writing, where you learn to write in English or French. And reading, of course. And then literature, which is all about books, how to read books and understand them well. And of course, play, there's acting and drama, where you do plays and act out things. Quite a lot of things to do in school, really. Quite a varied activity. But one of the activities of the school this day was gardening. So all the children were led out to the local plot where gardening is allowed. And the teacher set gave every child a bundle of seeds and said, children, we're going to learn gardening today. I'm going to teach you how to plant seeds. You make a small hole in the ground with your finger and then drop the seed into it, and then you cover it with soil, and then you add a bit of water. That's how you grow seeds. What are the seeds, ma'am? asked one of the children. They're sunflowers, said the teacher. And every child had a bunch of sunflowers to plant. They're a bunch of sunflower seeds, that is. But the little boy had something else to plant. Do you know what it was? No. A carrot. Exactly. In his pocket, there was something wriggling around which wanted to be planted in the soil. So when the, nobody was looking, the little boy made a much deeper hole than all the rest, pulled out the carrot and popped it into the hole. Oh, thank you, said the carrot. Thank you so much. And the carrot said, oh, I can feel the warm earth on my orange skin and I can feel the moisture and I'm starting to grow roots already. It won't be long before my leaves come out and I'll have some... <coughs> some tiny, tiny flowers, and I'll grow seeds, and my children will be born next year. And the little boy watched. Every day he would go to his patch and see his carrot getting bigger with the green leaves coming out of the top, and he'd have a little talk with his carrot. The funny thing was, nobody else could hear the carrot, only the little boy. Well, that is about the end of the story because the carrot lived happily ever after in the in the. No, that's about it, really, and that's how the carrot we got to safety. And as for the mummy, she spent a long, long time wondering what happened to her carrot. She never did find it. Can you can you do one more line? One more line. Well, as the summer came, the carrot grew bigger and bigger, and the leaves and the flowers came, and finally the flowers were fertilized by the flower, by the seeds, by the butterflies, by the insects, by the uh, bees, all the animals which came. And then the seeds followed, and then the seeds got scattered on the ground. And a, the year after, there wasn't just one carrot, there were hundreds of carrots growing there. The end. Why? The seeds had landed on the ground and they'd all germinated. From all the different seeds. You know, a carrot has hundreds of seeds, not just one. But, but, but Daddy, the sunflowers were cool. But the, the teacher said uh, us the sun, there were sunflowers. Daddy, the teacher said there were sunflowers. Yes, she did, didn't she? The children planted the seeds to grow sunflowers. But they'll take a bit long. They'll, they would have grown very tall by the summer. Any more questions? Uh, uh, yes. I have a question for you. Did the mummy find the carrot? No. Did the mummy chop up the carrot? No. Did she pop the carrot in the boiling water? No. So what do you think she put in the boiling water? Nothing. I'm sure she found something to put in the boiling water. And how about potatoes? Carrot. I love carrots. Maybe she did, yes. <laughs> A 
And that's the end of the story. So now we can all go to bed. Do you have any more questions? Any more, any more stories? I'm too tired. I'm falling asleep as we speak. No, do you have any more questions? Oh, yes. Do you have any more questions? No, I tell you. Oh, you want me to ask you one? Okay, here's a question. What did the boy do with a carrot at the end of the story? But the bit, the thing I asked you was, what did he do with the carrot at the end of the story? But that's, but that's he put it in the ground. He planted it, didn't he? Uh, that's the end. He planted the carrot. Uh, that was the answer. Good night now. Oh, before you go to bed, can you show me where Malaysia is, please? What? Quickly show me Malaysia. What Malaysia? On the map. Because you're going to be asked tomorrow where it is. Yeah. That's right. That's Malaysia. All the way here. That's it. And where's Indonesia? Indonesia, isn't it? Well, can you tell me where? Here it is. It says in Indonesia. Can you, can you tell me the friend of 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 the this of this country? Yeah, the, the, this country right at the end of like it looks like a dog's tail, but right at the end, the pink one there is Malaysia. Yes, all oh, this is Malaysia. And all this purple and, and, is and, Indonesia. And, 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 and the different countries in, 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 in Malaysia. And right at the end of Malaysia, you've got a very tiny country, you can hardly see it, just there, called Singapore. Singapore? Singapore is at the bottom of Malaysia. So can you see it? It's very, very small. You see the word there, it says Singapore there, but you can hardly see it, it's so small. Yeah, and then all around these purple islands, these are Indonesia. And, and what is a friend of this country? What's this country in purple next no, to... what's a friend of the, the, this country? Wh which country is the friend of Malaysia? Yeah. Well, I'm sure it's the countries around. There's Thailand up here, for example. And the, this is... And, and this next to... And this country next here is this, called and Sumatra. And next to China. And China's up right up at the top. And it's next to China. Yes. It's next to China. And there's Borneo here. What? And Indonesia here. And what? Australia down here. And China's up here. And Russia above China. And, and, what do and this is Africa. This what, Africa. Where, where do it live there? What? It lives there. It looks like it's, uh, what, it, that's that called Chung, that, it's, it's ch part of China, but it's called Chongqing, that town. And how about here? That's India. India. Who live in India? Indians live in India. Indians. How? Mm. And where? And where? And where do the the, the, the Caymans live? No. The Caymans? Well, in, in the Cayman Islands, somewhere over here. Uh, Cayman. Can't even see them. They're so small. So well, they're somewhere up here in the Caribbean. Yeah, somewhere here. And there's the United States or America. And there's Canada on top of America. And Canada. Uh, These three letters, USA, United States of America, USA. And it's written in French, Etats Unis. And that's Mexico. And that's Brazil here, up here, Brazil. Do you know where Brazil is? Yeah. Here. Uh, Brazil! This is an, an, an uh, African river. Brazil. The Amazon River is in Brazil, yeah. I don't know where it is exactly, but it must be... Maybe this is the Amazon. Let's have a look. See. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. I can't see, but was yes, that the Amazon? Yes, it is. It's the Amazon River. My goodness me, Brazil's a very big country, isn't it? Look, it's a blue. Oh. Well, sorry, I can't tell you which one's the Amazon River because I can't. See. My glasses aren't good enough. There's a lot of rivers here. River. This is a river and this is a river. Yes, that's right. But why, does, but why does it say letters on that river? It says the Hudson Bay up in Canada. That's in Canada. And, what's, and here? This is the ocean. It's the water, the sea. This is a big... And this is the water. Yes. Yeah, this is 
still hear the water. Here's some islands. I don't know what those islands are. Might be interested to go and see them one day. Um, and we can't get there because it's much too far. Yes, Where do we live? We live here in, in the middle of, right there, that spot there, it says Suisse. This one? This one? Yes, a little bit higher. Was it? A bit higher, a bit higher, a bit higher. There, yes. And with a G with a G there? Yeah, Geneva, G for Geneva. G, G for Geneva. This one there, this one there, there. Where is Sweden? Oh, where is it? Oh, yeah. Sweden's up here, isn't it? Well, where where is, lives. I forgot. Well, where is it again? And that's England here. But where is? But where is? I want to find. I I um I I I want to find some. I can't. Sh where we live? We live right here in the middle, there, about there. There's a G for Geneva, maybe. Oh there. yeah. And um, how do we get to there? Just have very, to, we live in a very small country too. We just too. have to go to go to here, and now we're in a, a country, which is this country. That's called Russia. Then we walk to here. Up, um, this big country here is called Russia. Oh, we're going. We're going to go here. That's Finland. And now we're nearly there to Katina. That's Sweden, yes. And where Katina was but born. That's where she would grow. Okay. Okay, let's get you in bed. 